Rant of Whatever. This is R.O.W. Welcome to Rant of Whatever. I'm your host, Kevin Yarrow. And nowadays, we seem to think that things that we can't see with our own eyes don't exist. Despite the fact that there might be evidence for it. And I'm not talking about God or even aliens. I'm talking about ghosts. There is undeniable evidence of the afterlife. And we tend to ignore it because we can't scientifically study it. But some people come face to face with these encounters and know for a fact that they're real. Our next guest on the show is a friend of mine named Sam who had a crazy paranormal encounter. So let's go to him right now and listen to his story. I'm going to just start with what happened this week while at work. So I have all these buildings that I patrol through. Some are completely empty. You know, some are full of businesses, whatever. But there's this one, like, place that I go to. And, like, all through my life, you know, I've had moments where I, like, felt like I was being watched. And I think everyone does when they're in a dark house going upstairs. You know, and it's... But there's some times where not only can you feel like you're being watched, but you feel like uh, you know where you're being watched from. And you can feel that there's something there watching you. And you know exactly where it's at. So this is uh, one of those places where, like, I have tons of places where I feel weird and I want to get out. But there's this one building in particular, this one suite that I have to go through to get to a rooftop. And I just feel weird in there. So uh, I, I always just kind of shove it to the back of my head until something actually happens. But uh, I was on my way between the neighboring place to there. And there's a homeless guy walking down the street with his uh, cart as I'm walking towards the building. He's just like, what's it like in there, huh? You know it's haunted. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> okay, then. But, like, yeah. So I just want to throw that in there because it's a weird thing and I have to keep going back there at 2 in the morning. I actually went there one time around 3 a.m. And, like, after then, I told myself, like, I don't care. I'm going to adjust my schedule and make sure that I'm always out of that building, like, before 2.30. Because after 2.30, it feels so incredibly weird in that space. And to have him say that I was, after, like, I had already, like, mindfully set it to make sure that I get that site done with around 1.30. thought it was funny. Um, so that's just a little shout-out to something recent. Uh, and I'll talk about my dad's house. So I'd say probably the first thing that was ever weird that I experienced was just when I was, like, four, five, whatever, I remember I would always wake up in the middle of the night and I just felt like I was being stared at. And I could feel something standing in the middle of my dad's uh, bathroom. Like, right from, like, it, it was weird because it's, like, it didn't feel like it was right there. Though it felt like it was watching from right there. It felt like it was standing around the corner, but still able to see. As if it, like, had a point in its vision where it could turn it 90 degrees, if that makes any sense. So, it, like... You could always feel this thing standing right around the corner. And um, I don't know. It just always freaked me out. But I felt it. So fast forward. Uh, we have the this this annex building in the room. I don't know if it's proper to call it annex. But it's it was just a stupid idea to build it. The way that the rain comes down on the roof hits this V. And... It uh, causes rain damage because it's like 40 feet of roof straight into this V. So, and heavy rains in Louisiana. So, uh, yeah, that just he sealed it a million times. I can't count the amount of times we went and sealed it, but it would always end up raining through. But anyway, you had the side room where we had all our stuff in and we used to play in there at one point. It was a big playroom. 
But I remember at some point in my life, probably from the time I was like three to eight or something like that, they ha- it was the computer phone. So I, don't, I remember my dad ended up mentioning it to me later in life that he experienced this too is whenever you were doing something in that room, you felt like like you could hear a whispering coming from the rest of the house, just in general, just like the house was whispering to that room, which uh, makes no sense because it was coming from downstairs. It was coming from upstairs. It's like literally like the whole house was trying to fuck with you for being in that side. Part. So, uh, you know, just many times where it's just like this weird whispering in the background, but nothing too crazy or anything. It's just, just like a whispering. And then uh, we'll, we'll go to the next memory I have, which is being a kid, I remember my brother slept over. And uh, so my brother goes downstairs. And I remember I was in my dad's room alone, which was never a thing because I always slept in the same room as my brother. But my brother wanted to stay downstairs with his friends, probably because drugs around that time of his life, probably friend doing something stupid he didn't want me to see, whatever. Uh, so I just remember being alone in my dad's room, which I never was. And then I just remember seeing white orbs all around the room and then they start flying at me. And I remember like, I don't, I'm not sure, but like, it was like, as my kids, my imagination from the part that I knew that was my imagination was I imagined these white orbs as skulls. And like, I, I remember what it looked like. So I know it wasn't skulls, but I remember it was like me trying to deal with the lack of information. But I just remember white orbs all around the room, like big. Uh, I would say like two times the size of a human head. Like were just flying at me. I mean, obviously they were smaller by the time they reached me, but from the corners of it. So I remember having to run downstairs and sleep near my brother. Uh, Let's see, the next thing. Uh, I ended up playing video games a lot, and the the computer room moved to a different room, but it was downstairs. So when I was older, I would play games until like 4 a.m., and frequently I would have pots and pans just like clashing in the other room. And it got weird at a certain point because we didn't have pots and pans, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, like, the only thing we had was uh, we had a fireplace, and there was a bunch of, like, pokers and, like, the little ash scooper thing. Everybody knows, like, general stuff. Like, there was, like, the four little tools. So I was like, eh, it could be that clanking together, but sometimes it'd be from that room, sometimes it'd be from the kitchen. And you, you, you know when it's that, like, that. Uh, so anyway, I, I remember one night in particular, even though this, like I said, this was something that happened all the time. Uh, I just remember, uh, like, yelling from the chair I was sitting there. I was just like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then it stopped for just a second, and then it, like, did it louder, but just for a couple seconds, just to, like, really be annoying. And I was just like, I got up, and I stood up, and I walked out there, and I was like, stop. I'm going to bed soon. I want to focus. I'm having fun playing games right now. Like, shut the fuck up. So, and then it stopped. Until I sat back down. As soon as I got back in the chair, it was clanking for just a second, and then it stopped for the rest of the night. So it was like, <laughs> it was funny just trolling me. <laughs> and then, uh, then I have the one night where Tons of stuff had happened up to this point, but you can, like, blame it on a million different things. But then I have the experience where, like, I felt it. And I was just like, okay, like, something's going on in this house. So the thing about this house, we didn't have AC for, like, a long time. There was, like, only two years where I remember there being a house phone. My dad didn't want to pay any kind of uh, subscriptions. I remember having uh, cable as a short time as a kid, but he didn't like that. 
And I remember having to get my job before we ever got a good internet connection because I paid for part of it. Uh, so, but my dad played his game, so we had to have internet connection. I remember him downloading movies <laughs> and the torrent literally taking 40 hours because of how shit the internet was. Like, a two gigabyte movie. Oh my God. And you just leave it. All right. But anyway. So the thing that happened, uh, I was, you know, it was late at night. Like I was usually going to bed around three or four or whatever. So like I said, the computer room was downstairs. All of our bedrooms were upstairs. There was the master bedroom the to the left as you entered the hall. And then the hall went to the right, which went to two other bedrooms and the bathroom. So I, my bedroom's to the right. Uh, obviously, I, I'm at the bottom of the stairs, and I, I was doing that glance up the stairs that everyone does, because, uh, you know, you're just getting a feeling for what you're about to undergo, it's a set of stairs, so I'll glance up, just doing that natural stair check, and not paying too much attention, as I look down, I'm like, was there just a person standing in the hallway? Like, I was so sure that I had seen a silhouette of a person in the hallway. Which, I mean, like, you can say whatever. It was a dark night. There's no lights on. But it was like, it was like seeing the super black colors next to black. Like, it was a shadow in darkness. Like, just a spot that ate the light. So, and it was like a silhouette of a person standing there. So I look up. And there's nothing there. And I'm like, I know what you saw. And I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to do my thing that causes this stuff to aggravate me less. And I'm going to just pretend like I haven't seen anything. I'm going to just, I'm going to not give it the satisfaction. Sometimes, like I said, with the pots and pans that I, you know, just raw, I'm the master. But like, you know, for the most part, you know, pretend like, it's not worth trying to communicate with you type of thing. So anyway, I walk up the stairs. I get through the hallway. And as I'm walking through that particular spot, ice cold wind, like the coldest I've ever felt, blows through my body. I feel like I'm not there. And it was like, like, yeah, like it was blowing, like seriously, on a level that just like completely ignored my existence straight through. And I was freezing cold. And I felt it on my insides and everything. And then it's gone. And I'm just like walking through it, pretending like that didn't happen. But I'm like, what the fuck at the same time? And I mean, <clears throat> that, I mean, that's all that happened. Wasn't anything crazy in that, but it was like one of those things, like when you feel it, you can't say, oh, like there's no drafts. All the doors are shut. It's just a hallway by itself. And we have no AC. There's no open vents, there's nothing that can cause that. So, uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, I would tell my wife about it all the time. And, uh, you know, more stuff happened over the years, nothing too memorable because after that, the most describable experience and the undeniable one, I stopped really looking for ways to describe what was going on and just kind of accepted that weird stuff happened. And uh, so anyway, later on in life, after telling my wife about it and all this stuff, she's like, I have experienced all these haunted things. And she also told me that she experienced mosquitoes, but she learned that uh, some things are worse in Louisiana. <laughs> oh my God, bro. So bad. Uh, so anyway... We go down there and just constantly doors slamming, people like footsteps, like really heavy activity. And my dad, he had a habit of going to places that were haunted because he was someone that pushed away ghosts and stuff. And I realized this later and my mom even talked about it because she was like haunted by this ghost. She would see the reflection of this guy sometimes and everything. And she like, or turn and see this dude standing there. And my dad could just like ward off this stuff and say like, no, nah, this is my space, deal with it. And ghosts had to accept it, you know? Not everyone can do it, but he could. So, 
So yeah, after my dad was gone, the house was crazy. Like we would have all the doors shut, everything. And um, the weirdest place, and I actually found that it always happened worse. And like there, there would be very minor things, like maybe a footstep here and there, or just like a creep but not like a full door slam if we left my dad like the master bedroom the the like what is it a closet for your, all your clothes and stuff if that door was shut everything was much chiller but if it was left open we hear doors slamming all this stuff like someone running in the hallway and it's just so weird but and it's funny because like that was that hallway like and when I was in my dad's bed and I felt something right there around the corner, that's what was around the corner was that closet. So, and my wife could even tell you that she didn't believe it was going to be like that, but you can't deny it when it's happening that way. You can't just say, oh, it's an old house and the doors open and close themselves because of the draft. Like, you're really hearing this stuff. Like, as if I haven't had wind blow door shut before <laughs> but anyway that's it that was sam with his absolutely insane paranormal story and it's funny you know it's funny how we as a society don't accept these things as real a lot of us do don't get me wrong a lot of us do but a majority of us don't despite the fact that there is scientific evidence there well until next time the next episode is going to be the last this month and it's going to come out a day later directly on halloween you can email me at kevinyarrow at gmail.com and until then stay spooky scary